Once dropped to the MIDI tools folder within the user library, they should automatically appear in two categories here, generators and transformers. I've already got a clip of two bars in length, which will be useful to demonstrate a variety of the features built in to MetaRhythm. We will be creating some house music today with a 909 kit to start. And to begin, I will demonstrate the kick pattern. So right now, there are a variety of ways we could create such a pattern. And the meta rhythm includes polyrhythmic, polymetric, and Euclidean algorithms to produce a variety of rhythms in a variety of ways. So first of all, I'm going to click in the MIDI clip and then go back to the device to create what's a new apply cycle. By default with generate enabled, whenever I make changes in the device, they will appear here. And having enabled generate this pattern of 16 steps filled with a density of 16 at a velocity of 100 with an accent every three steps at 127 with length 100% the length of the step and a 100% probability of playback appears. If I want to make every step 127, I can simply bring the velocity up and or also turn the accents off. If I want kicks less often, then I can bring the density down and you'll see that kicks are being removed until we land on a pattern of four kicks filling every 16 steps, arriving at what is basically our standard techno kick pattern. Now, that is not what this device is for, but simply to illustrate the Euclidean programming available in the steps mode. To begin editing a new drum sound, I must first click in the clip to reset the apply cycle to demonstrate to the device that, hey, I'm trying to work on a different drum sound now. And to do so, I can adjust the note. And yeah, let's... Go to the toms. And this is uh, a good chance to show the rotate option. And if I rotate by one step, or two steps, we basically stagger this pattern. But I would like to create a much more interesting pattern. So first of all, I will take this pattern of 16 steps and let's try filling it five times. So this is the Euclidean algorithm, which takes those five steps available within the cycle of 16 and distributes them as evenly as possible. And I like where it's starting. I don't know if I would want to have the rotate at zero. It's okay, but it's kind of competing with the kick there. So I think that rotate of two is good. I'll click in the clip to set a new apply cycle. And I'm going to take the same pattern, the same Euclidean pattern, and uh, transpose it up to the tom mid. And I obviously don't want to play this sort of tom chord. I'm going to click the invert button. So this is going to take the inverse of the currently selected pattern, but it's way too busy. I would like every third of those notes in that pattern to play. So this is the pattern masking option here. By default at one, every single available note will play. If I set it to two, only every second note in the pattern will play. And here at three, every third is nice. I can also reduce the velocity of these. And in fact, create some velocity deviation by dragging the deviation range for these down. 
nice. I think I also want them to retain that pattern but play less often overall. So I can drag the chance for all these down and you'll see the black triangle, the telltale black triangle appear. Nice. If I open the chance lane, we can see the chances of those toms are quite lower. Okay, so all of these steps are based on a rate calculated here. Let's look at how that works on a different drum sound. I think I'll click in the clip to set a new apply cycle and I'll go and select my, my rims. Okay, and uh, as I begin making changes here, I wanna leave that note in place. Let's set a different bass rate. If I multiply this by two, it's now taking uh, 16 steps of eighth notes that are being filled and playing every third of those. So this is not so exciting. If I divide it by two, we get back to 16th notes. But where it gets really interesting is if, for example, I divide it by three again. So we're getting this weird triplet thing at that point, which of course I could simply select a triplet rate from the base rate menu and leave these at one. But what could be interesting would be to take a quarter note and divide it by five. It's way too busy, so uh, I think I'll leave this where it is and maybe come back to this sort of polyrhythmic programming when time comes to explore some other percussion sounds. And let's just go back to our 16th note and explore some non 16th step patterns. The maximum step length is governed by the length of the current loop divided by the rate. So currently, there are only 32 16th notes here. If the rate is at uh, 30 second notes, then I can get to a maximum of 64 steps, for example. But uh, we do not want to be messing about with 30 second notes at this juncture. What I want to explore is taking an odd number cycle. So it's doing the inverse because I left the uh, reverse invert of the pattern from the high toms on. So let me turn that off. So there we go, that's 22 of 23 steps. So I will drop that down to seven. And I might rotate that one to get it syncopated. Okay, so some velocity deviation and chance could be good. And let's just go back to our hi-hats here, clicking in the clip to reset the apply cycle. And in this case, um, yeah, let's go up to our hi-hat closed. So I think I just want eighth notes. And I've set it to play every other eighth note, but the chance is low, so I'll put it chance 100. And then I'm gonna click this new button, which we've not explored, which is the every other. So I'll play the opposite of every two. Again, <laughs> I understand there are perhaps easier ways to create a hi-hat pattern, but I'm simply trying to illustrate what we can do with this tool. If I adjust the length, all the note lengths get much shorter. And yeah, let's do one last thing here, which is to show how we can do a selection based operation. So in this case, I'm gonna take eighth notes and divide them by five. And I think I want them to play each one. Nice. So I've created this little quintuplet roll here 
which I can, of course, just edit the ramp here in uh, the velocity settings. And I think I will also group notes and bring their chance down. So they will be activated or deactivated as a group. Let's keep it techno and add some more rhythms here with a more interesting uh, percussion kit. So in this case, um, I will, yeah, let's leave it at a one bar loop and let's find our bongos. Yeah. And to hear anything, I have to press play, but I can already tell this is not going to be quite uh, so interesting. Let's just do a 15 step pattern. And this got maximized to eight because I've got the rate at eighth notes, but I think I do want some syncopated sixteenths. And yeah, let's do an odd number pattern. So the rollover is here, 15 steps in, and the density can be, yeah, like so. And I think I want to create some call and response here, perhaps. Nice, it's nice. That's actually sounding good with the uh, velocity deviation. So now clicking here into the apply cycle, I will just drop. Yeah, nice and invert. And these ones, I think I want the base velocity to be a bit higher with a bit less deviation and a little lower chance of playing. Okay, we can also reverse the cycle of the pattern, but I think I'll go to my cowbell here. Let's go to one of these cowbells and do a septuplet pattern. So I'll take a half note here and divide it by seven and make sure I've got the right notes selected. So it's a completely polyrhythmic, polymetric, meaning I can have it cycle differently with this multiplier. And one thing I've neglected to show with the mute masking, So that triplet thing, that half notes divided by six, is fitting a little better. I think, uh... A little sloppy, a little loose, but that could be nice. I think I want to add an accent here. So every third one of these is up a bit higher. And to have that make sense, I'll bring the velocity down and the accent is counted on the actual notes in the clip not based on some arbitrary pattern length so I'll click again and let's go up to our cabasa maybe okay so now what I want to do is just look at some different playback cycles And let's go to a cycle of nine and fill it, yeah, seven times. And again, the inversion is on, so I need to disable that. So here it's playing forward. Let's do eight steps filled five times. So we can see here, that's the pattern once, here's the pattern twice. If I play it backwards, we get a different rhythmic pattern. So the notes are arranged differently. Because we have one bar, and uh, that allows me 16, 16 notes, I'll change it one more time to the final pattern, which is the forward and backward. So. 
slightly different at the start and at the end. I think the last thing I want to show is how this can work nicely with a nice accent on there and a high chance. And instead of playing every one, I'm going to play every fifth, but I'm going to invert it. So now the pattern is based on every five count. So here's five, and then... Okay, so I think it's time to start adding some acidic bass to our pattern. 